Jeremiah Dickey, the athletic director at Boise State, coming off the huge win in football of Brigham Young. So much going on in college football. Jeremiah Dickey, friend of the show, again at Baylor for uh, many years and under uh, with Mac Rhodes, uh, everywhere he's been, almost everywhere he's been in college. Hey, how you been? What's it been like on campus after that win in Provo? Well, first, it's good. Uh, it's good to hear from you guys, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come on. And uh, um, oh, it was uh, it was an amazing experience. One BYU does a, a great job with their atmosphere and, and crowd and and their student support, and and so that was uh, that was something that was really cool to be a part of. Uh, packed house, and and for us to get that win, you know, uh, smoke. I, I saw how much our, our guys were working behind the scenes, and and our coaches and. It just it meant a lot, you know, and and uh, it's something that uh, it came at a good point in time for us, and I'm really excited to, to for this weekend, and, and we take on Air Force, and they're a great program, and, and looking forward to that. You guys have played a very tough schedule early on in the season, and uh, some tough games. Uh, how do you feel your team has has kind of come through and built out of that, especially you know now being able to build off that BYU win. You know, we knew coming in that, that there was some work that needed to be done and, and you know, we were united in, in our approach and, and, and continuing to add to this uh, great foundation that, that we inherited. And and so, uh, yeah, I mean, we've played a tough schedule, but, you know, I think that's who we are. You know, we've, we've grown to expect to, to win those games and, and the ball just hasn't bounced our way in a few of them. And, and so to control what we can and then to go into a place like Provo and and get a, a win against a top team program and a great program that you guys are going to see this weekend. Um, you know, it, it was, uh, it was huge for us and, and, you know, we're, everything's still ahead of us. You know, our goal is to win a conference championship every year and, and, um, and we still have that opportunity and, and we have some momentum going into this weekend. And, and so I'm grateful for that. Jeremiah, you were obviously, you know, very patient. You, you did, Years and years of work to get to this point to, to be where you are now, Boise State. I mean, just what's that, that journey been like for you and now having settled in the last few months as best as you can? I mean, just what the, what's the experience been like? Is it what you, what you expected? You know, I, I don't know if it's what I expected. You know, I, I was fortunate, and I've talked to you guys about this before, that, that Mac and, 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 you know, someone like Hunter Yerchek at Arkansas, they, they prepared me to the best of their ability. But I don't know if anything can truly prepare you for, for – the uncomfortableness of this chair. And, uh, and so I, I, I can't thank them enough for, for how they poured into me and, and the mistakes I made along the way that, that I think is, is very much for, you know, prepared me for the decisions I make on a daily basis. And, um, you know, I'm 10 months in, I think, and, and, uh, it feels like I've, I've been here for five years and, and I'm very much more, uh, I'm getting more comfortable, you know, in the chair and, and, uh, you know, I'm excited, uh, you know, because right now the first year is always uncomfortable when you go through this level of change and we're still navigating COVID and, and there's always a transitional period. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to what's next for us and in and, uh, and the second year, you know, now that we have staff set and, uh, and really taking it to the next level. All right. Uh, well, it's obvious the college football landscape has changed. Boise State's name has been more than just on our radar but the radar of the future as well. We know about the possibilities of other conferences reaching out to you. Uh, how much does that throw into your pile of things to worry about on that sometimes uncomfortable chair? Well, you know, it goes back to, I think Craig was the one who asked the question, you know, um, it, it, I think it's been an advantage for me because I wasn't, I, I didn't know what to expect, right? This is all new for me. And so, um, having to navigate COVID and, and conference realignment, name, image, and likeness, um, and the historic changes taking place in this industry, um, you know, it allows me to approach it with a fresh set of eyes and, and, you know, to always do what's in the best interest of our institution. And, you know, it's been challenging. You know, the, the conference realignment conversation uh, took a lot of time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like we, we spent a couple months on that. And, and I don't know if it's, uh, you know, uh, ever over. And so it's something always in the back of my mind, and, and we're going to continue to put our best foot forward and, and make sure that uh, we always do what's in the best interest of this uh, institution and our student athletes. And, and I'm excited, you know, for some of the things that we, you know, we have uh, planned or you know, that we've planned and, and that, uh, you know, we plan on moving forward with, um, you know, such as our, our facility you know, campaign and, and uh, some other things that are really going to drive our revenue and, and really allow us to pour back into our programs and, 
and uh, enhance uh, this national brand. Have you looked at, or I get a lot this Boise State fans who listen and watch us, about the stadium, either an expansion, a renovation, a new location? Is that something that that is on the table? Uh, I would, you know, not a new location uh, at this point in time, but, you know, we're going to run out all ground balls. And, you know, uh, we partnered with AECOM, you know, a national architecture firm, and, and, uh, and, you know, grateful for their work that they're currently doing with our staff. And, and, you know, we need to, we need to do more, you know, we need to enhance the experience for both our, our fans and our student athletes. And, and, you know, could that lead to an expansion of the stadium? I, I think there's, the, there's a great foundation that, that we, that we have to work with. And, and I think we need to enhance that experience. And, and, uh, and I do see, you know, for CS adding premium space and, and, uh, you know, potentially closing in, you know, uh, an end zone. And, and, uh, I think that that's going to best position us, you know, whether we're included in the next realignment or not. And, and that's my goal is to always do what's in the best interest of this place and, and to help us, you know, uh, drive those opportunities and, and definitely to impact the recruiting. What did you think from the outside looking at about how quickly the Big 12 was able to react to what happened? Um, it doesn't surprise me, you know, uh, um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, everyone, because this has been going on for, for many years, um, you know, uh, realignment is always in the back of, of, uh, of our industry's mind. And, and, and so it doesn't surprise me that they were able to, to pivot and, and add teams as, as quickly as they did. And, you know, I think that's something that nowadays you have to be prepared for and, and, you know, uh, um, I, I think uh, Commissioner Bowlesby does a, you know, does a good job of, of you know, uh, um, trying to stay ahead of it. And, and I think Texas and OU leaving probably was a surprise to many. And, you know, and for them to be able to turn it around as quickly as they, they did, uh, you know, uh, I have a lot of respect for them and, and how they were able to navigate that. Jeremiah, have you heard anything at all or – have kind of, uh, at least you know it's out there, the possibility of a Chapter 2 expansion with the Big 12? Um, I've heard what you guys have heard, and, and you know, uh, there's so many people within the industry talking, and, you know, it, it's hard to tell what's what's true or what isn't. Um, but but I think it goes back to what I said earlier. We're going to control what we can, and, and we're going to, you know, continue to invest in our product and, and our, our foundation and, and our student-athletes and, and best position ourselves for whatever comes next. Uh, much of it we don't control, but, you know, I'm going to try to control as much as I possibly can and, and very much have the support of our institution and, and Bronco Nation, and, and that excites me. What would it mean to Boise State to be a part of a Power Five conference if that ever happens? I think it would mean a lot, you know, but, Smoke, the reality is is we operate as, as one, you know. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. We're we're not, you know, being a national brand and, and the, the schedule that we play and, and the expectations that we have of ourselves. Um, I don't know how much it changes from a competition standpoint or, or what, you know, uh, we're we're out to accomplish on an annual basis. And so, you know, uh, it would help from from a revenue standpoint and it would help from, you know, additional resources. And, and obviously there's opportunities there. Uh, but I, I don't know how much changes for us. You know, this is this is who we are. This is who we've been for the last 25 years. And and uh, and it's something that, you know, we have a lot of pride in. And, and you know, and, and it gives me a great foundation to build off of. And 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 God willing, hopefully take this to the next level. And, and that's my goal. You, you dress for the job you want. Right, Jeremiah? That's right. Absolutely. And, and we're doing that daily. You know, that's that's, you know, uh, probably a little bit of what I bring to the table and to this team and to this institution, you know, uh, having been at Baylor and, and you know, uh, knowing, you know, and following in, in, in Max footsteps of, of, of how he leads and, and you know, uh, preparation. And, you know, we're, we're always going to be prepared for what's next. And, and that's something that, uh, you know, I think goes hand in hand with, with this brand and, and you know, uh, and that's, you know, uh, Mount West has, has been great to us, and, and you know, we're, we're excited to see what happens there, but, you know, we're always going to do our due diligence and, and make sure we're best positioned for, for what's best for the Broncos. 
So, Jeremiah, this has nothing to do with realignment, but I noticed at the beginning of the season you guys announced that you would be starting alcohol sales, and that led to me asking Mac Rhodes a very funny question <laughs> about, is there any chance that Baylor would ever – and I got a very funny no back in response. But uh, how has that gone? What was kind of the reception initially, and how has that worked out? It's worked out well, you know, in doing our research, and, and you know, it was something that, that it was important to me. Um, it, it's, it's not an easy decision to make. And, and so we wanted to make sure that, that, you know, uh, um, that we did our research and, and we felt like, uh, eliminating the reentry and, and, you know, and, and uh, which we needed to do if we were going to sell alcohol, it would, it would obviously, you know, uh, keep our stands packed and, and, you know, drive maybe a, a different level of, of, of interest in our program and eliminate excuses for, for showing up and, and supporting the Broncos. And, and, you know, so far, you know, I, I think our, our first three home games um, were our three most well attended games that, that we've had in the last five years. Um, I, I know from, from uh, you know, everyone, you know, believes that, that these decisions are made strictly from a revenue standpoint and, and for me, it was more about the, the game experience and, and we have a, a huge tailgating community. And, and, you know, what we found is, is a lot of our, our incidences uh, related to alcohol have actually gone down and, and, you know, we haven't seen a, an increase in, in over drinking, et cetera. And, and that's something that I, I hope holds true through, throughout the season. Um, when, when people don't have to, to binge drink before they go into the game or, or leave at halftime to, to go drink more, you know, out in the parking lot. Um, I think it provides a, a better overall family experience. And, and that's something that so far through our first three games has held true. Did uh, Mac Rhodes, when you beat Brigham Young, text you and said, okay, that's a nice win. I'm going to take that back to the Big 12 expansion committee? <laughs> He didn't say it exactly like that, but um, he he does. You know, uh, him and I will touch base. You know, after uh, you know the good and the bad, and um, and so I always look forward to his texts. And you know, uh, that was uh, that was a big one. You know, for us, and and I, I knew. You know, and I know probably. You know, uh, Baylor Nation is is disappointed that that BYU is coming in with a loss, but. They're a great program, and and, uh, and and they're a really good team. And, and I hope, you know, Baylor, I haven't followed, uh, but I hope they sell out this game. I would expect them to, and, and uh, I would expect BYU to, to bring their best. And and uh, I'm excited to, to be a fan this weekend. Yeah, I think it's on track to be a pretty good setting, so so hopefully that remains the case. Uh, Jeremiah, you weren't around Dave Aranda and company, you know, very long, obviously, uh, but – yeah, the, the, the change happened, you know, after you are, or the change happened very quickly. But last year was so weird for everybody. We know all that. But what's it like on your end to kind of see the, the bounce back for Baylor football this year and them having some success because of just how difficult, uh, you know, obviously everything was to begin with? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you said that. Last year, um, for, for his first year, um, you know, uh, if, it was maybe the the worst possible situation to come into a, as a new head coach. And so I give him a lot of credit for how he approached it, uh, his attitude. Um, you know, you guys see it on a daily basis. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his. And, and I, and like I said, I'm watching from afar and, and, you know, uh, it, it, it means a lot to me, uh, you know, to see him have success in, in that program and those student athletes and, and those coaches and staff around him because uh, last year was really difficult. And, you know, one day maybe it will be a great 30 on 30 for, for, you know, everything that, that we had to navigate. Um, so it does not surprise me the success he's having this year. And, and I'm seeing the success he's having off the field with recruiting as well. And, and, you know, that's, uh, that's who he is and, and he's been consistent. And, you know, uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I think the world of him, you know, someone, I, I saw someone tweet, I don't know if it was you guys, um, about, you know, similarities between him and Scott. And, yeah. um, and, and I see that, you know, uh, what you see is what you get and he is consistent and I don't care if it's a, a big win or a big loss, he is consistent. And, and I think that's important. And, you know, the industry needs people like Scott and, and, and coach Randa. And, and uh, I'm just, I'm really happy for him and the success he's, he's finding. Dave is Scott without caffeine. That's what, <laughs> that's the difference. <laughs> That, that is true. Yeah, very true. <laughs> All right. Uh, how much do you pay attention to what Boise State alum Kellen Moore is doing with the Cowboys in the NFL? 
I texted him today, actually. Uh, you know, he's, he's someone that um, is very important to us and, and to me, and I've enjoyed the conversations I've had with him. And, you know, uh, um, God, he can't, I mean, he, he had an epic run, you know, uh, here and, um, and was really a part of building this foundation. And, and so being a Cowboys fan, you know, and, and the, the pipeline that, that, uh, you know, Mr. Jones has to, to this, uh, you know, this football program, um, it, it's something that uh, I'm always watching the Cowboys and, and watching what they're doing and, and not surprised by his success. Um, you know, Kellen is a future head coach. And, you know, uh, and I would ex- fully expect him to get his opportunity in the NFL here soon. Uh, he's earned it and, and is very deserving of it. Cedric Wilson. Leighton Cedric Vanderich. Wilson. Yeah. Leighton Vanderich. Vanderich. Uh, yeah, Scandrick. Br- yeah. Brian Harson seems to be having, at least right now, a pretty good start at Auburn as well. It's another guy that you guys uh, have in your tree as well. He is, you know, and, and, and that's a, a tough place. And, and, you know, obviously in a, in a very difficult league and, you know, really happy for him. You know, uh, every person that's come before us has has you know uh, put their mark on on this program, and and you know uh, I, I love for them to have success, and and we're you know I'm sure a lot of Bronco Nation is is following you know what he's doing, and and uh, I'm excited to see it, and and you know it's the more the more those you know those people a part of our tree have success, the more they talk about us, and, mm-hmm. and so very much uh, an Auburn fan and, and uh, just like I am a Cowboys fan and, and anyone else who's come before us. Jeremiah, one more thing about the Boise State. You've said everything. You guys, as you said, as a, a national brown. But, Brand, what do you say about sometimes when people look and maybe don't quite understand what Boise brings to the table? Not that you have to prove it to anybody, but things are changing, right? It's not just if you're a part of a maybe the South or you're a part of being connected close to a city or whatever, that, that you guys can, can kind of handle your own. Yeah, I mean, I think we've proven it, and and now in today's age of technology and, and social media and you know whatnot, you know, I don't know, you know, obviously it, it matters where you're located, but you know, uh, we we charter everywhere, and, and most teams are now, and and so I don't I don't buy into the whole distance and region and, and all of that. Um, you know, uh, I think our, our brand speaks for itself. And, and, you know, I think if anything, you know, and it's part of my duties and, and job is to, to tell our story. And, and it's something that, that I think, I think we're, we're getting more strategic and intentional around. And, and there's obviously some things that we need to do to improve, you know, our, our current situation, such as facilities, uh, you know, and, and like I said, we're going through that assessment and, and, you know, how we, we, uh, you know, we brought in Cody, Goggler from from Baylor and, and he's mm-hmm. you know uh, um, putting a, together a membership drive and some other things that that we're working on and, and we're going to control what we can and continue to tell this great story and it's it, we're not a, a one trick pony I've said that before you know we're you know we have eighteen sport programs that have had uh, a lot of success over the years and and uh, I think sometimes people look at us as, as this you know just this football program and, and because of that blue turf and and that's just the the start there's so much more behind it and and that's something that uh, we just need to do a better job of of, of getting our coaches out there and, and promoting our programs and and uh you know and, and that's something that we're going to continue to work through hey we're proud of you thank you jeremiah thank you for the access and time congratulations on that huge win and good luck we hope that at some point down the road that we're talking to you about something else as well when it comes to realignment but thank you and keep doing the great job Hey, thank you, guys. I appreciate it, and uh, good luck this weekend. Thank you. Jeremiah Dickey, the uh, Boise State Athletic Director, many years uh, with Mac Rhodes, uh, recently with Baylor. And, uh, man, you talk about a first year. You deal with COVID. You deal with all sorts of things, and all of a sudden, all just the same thing on all ADs, but then NIL, transfer portal, uh, the realignment. Who's in? Who's out? Who's on the radar? Who's not? Thank you to Jeremiah Dickey, Bay, uh, excuse me, former Baylor assistant AD and now athletic director at Boise State. Yeah, I really liked JD when he was here in Waco. He was oh. a great guy, and uh, he was, you know, I'm not the most outgoing person. I'll be the first to admit that. I'm kind of the guy in the corner just kind of thinking to myself. Uh, but 
you know, he he was very welcoming, very open, and and very cool when I when I met him early on, and and they did a tremendous job, and that's why he's now the AD at Boise State was because of all the great work they did in Waco and, and other stops as well. So definitely rooting for him to to have a lot of success uh, up in Idaho. All right, uh, when we come back, Paul Catalina's top five near the.